say the children of the Lord. Are there any children of the Lord here this morning? Amen. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord must be first receptive. You have to receive the word of God. Amen. Amen. You could hear it and reject it, but you have to receive it. I'm so blessed and pleased to have heard um, Sister Barbara repeating stuff that was said. You know, it's a joy to, to see the word of God prospering. Amen. Amen. I want to go straight into the word. Would you allow me the privilege? You know, today is, um, what do you call it? Cinco Sin what? I think some of you have a cinco already. <laughs> Amen. In Trinidad, there was uh, four fishermen. And those four fishermen got lost off the coast of Venezuela there. And they, their boat was turned over, whatever, and they were trying to make it look so, you know, that the Venezuelan did it, whatever, you know the story. And the joke was that they wrote the headline, and the headline was they wanted to make it so nice to say, Cuatro Cinco. <laughs> Four men was missing, amen. <laughs> so the point is, I don't want to have no sinking feeling in the church. Because I have resurrection power in me, amen. So I want to lift your hands this month of me and declare that in the name of Jesus, I am blessed to be alive. I'm blessed to hear the word. I'm blessed to know that God is on my side. I know the word of God works. I know prayer works. And it's also there's power in the midst of his people. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want to share with you, as I said, I'm not going to be uh, trying to, to contain this because... The word of God sometimes, as Pastor was talking, when you have a burden for the word of God, is you have a love for God's people. Amen. And that, that's so true. Because if you love somebody, you should not be afraid to tell them the truth. Amen. Those you don't love, you can let them get away with anything. Amen. But God loves you. Amen. That's why his word is truth. Amen. Amen. There's one thing that I want to share with you. It's going to be a little long, but if you will permit me, and I see, I, I'm very sensitive. If I know it's, it's not making an impact, I'm stopping. Because I know how important it is to receive the right word. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about something that, that is, has been in my spirit. But before I do so, we can turn to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10 to 13. And I have the privilege of having... Pastor Mickey helping me a little bit, so those of you may be a little slow on the word, you will be able to see it and read it, amen? amen? And my text is not, that's not my main text, that's just a part of understanding what God has for us. In uh, Matthew chapter 13, we read from verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Can we go to the next verse so I can follow? Go ahead. Verse 11 and 12. And 12. Okay. And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. I want you to lift your hand and say, It's given unto me. It's given unto me. Not them. Not them. Say it again. Say me. me. The mysteries is for me. The mysteries is for me. All right? Because... A lot of times Jesus was challenged by these words. He says, he says, um, they came to him asking why it is that why it is there's so many things happening in the world today, and the world can't understand, or people can't comprehend, because their eyes are blind. But you're you're so grateful that God has provided a platform called an altar where the word of God can be ministered unto you, amen. So he says, the mystery. Somebody say mystery. mystery. Jesus also continued another um, a verse of scripture, and you can look at it from Luke chapter 10, verse 21, as I set it up in your spirit. Uh, Jesus is rejoicing in something. He rejoices when you, are, you have removed ignorance from your life. Amen. Read it in Luke chapter 10, 21. Pastor Mick is helping me there. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, mm. I thank thee, O Father, mm -hmm. Lord of heaven and earth, Amen. 
that thou has hid these things mm -hmm. from the wise and prudent I wish somebody lift and has revealed them unto Amen. babes even so father for so it seemed good in thy sight I'm not here to preach to emotion I'm here to preach to the spirit man Amen, Amen. and here with the word of God says, Jesus rejoices in your ability to receive the power of God in your life Amen Today, we have had many, and I, I say sparingly, that we have had, and myself included, we have had many stimulating conversations with people preaching, and they get so excited, and they, we talk about emotions, and what this could do, and whatever. At the end of the day, the emotional state of a man or woman, after he leaves the church, it goes back to his original status. But when your spirit is changed, hallelujah. when your spirit has been affected, hallelujah, you can leave this church and go for years because the spirit leaves an impact, hallelujah. Are there anybody have an impact in your spirit when you heard the word of God and it changed you and it rearranged you and it made you realize, listen, I couldn't understand it years gone by, but I understand it now. I was preaching in a crusade in a rural part of Trinidad, and a guy got saved. He was a drunk, and he got saved, and he got delivered. And I said, well, it would be good. They had a, close to 300 people. I said, why don't you come up and give your testimony? Because everybody knows that you were a drunk and, and you whatever, and that's going to be a great testimony. So he went up, and he started to say this. He says, I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. The people in the congregation who know him say, you lie, you was never blind. You are a drunk. Misinterpret. Misunderstand. Misinform. And because of our misinterpretation, misinformation, and misrepresentation, we are living in misery. But if you could solve your mystery, you will end your misery today. Somebody give God a praise, hallelujah. I want to speak to you on a note that is very important, that we need to stop living miserable. There's no misery in your Christianity. Amen? Turn to somebody and says, no misery. Let that be a history. You are not to be miserable people. The supposed to be people who know God. Amen. Amen. Listen to this and listen to this carefully. If you look at, uh, there are four uh, Jewish words that is used in scriptures to, would you mind me walking a little bit? I need to talk. <laughs> there are four Jewish words that is used in scriptures to call Jewish hermeneutics where you use to understand certain things. And the first of that word is called Pisha. P. Apostasy, S H T. You can insert. It means to look at the scriptures from the surface. Are you hearing me? It is surface. Never go into depth. Never go deep. Always on the surface. Amen. Don't go to the deep end of the pool. Swim where you can touch the ground. Amen. It's called a comfort zone. It's a place where everyone will have control. I don't want to lose control in church so people can laugh at me. When the spirit of the Lord is there is power and there is liberty. Hallelujah. And the church we need to understand that it's time to leave the shallow places. Pishat is also like this. Have you ever looked at a vast expanse of water and you see how beautiful it looks? Anybody? like an ocean, and the ocean is so beautiful, and you see, wow, it even looks like there's no wave. It's all placid and nice and, you know, uniform. Isn't that a good word? Yes. But if you remain on the surface, you will miss the life that is in the depth. Because in that same look, if we go under the ocean, you will see an ecosystem, a biosphere of life and things that you never thought about. Amen. Coral life. Amen. The church needs to remove themselves from the surface and go deep in the word of God. Amen. Can we all say amen today? Amen. The second word that is used to describe, and everybody said Jesus spoke in parables. 
but there was another Jewish terminology that he used, and I, I'm very I'm grateful for the men of God that are here. They can back me up if they know this, but it's so true that God, Jesus didn't speak in parables. He was very clever in how he said things. Amen. Amen. And then another word is used. It's called remez. R-E-M-E-Z. Amen. Remez means to drop hints and clues, but never say it outright. You got a hint. You got a clue. Amen. Jesus was dropping hints and clues of who he was. One day, he was confronted by the, by the people, and he, they, wanted, they wanted to, in John chapter 8, I, I'm just going to talk quickly about it. And while he was there, they, they were saying stuff, and he said, before Abraham was I am. He gave a hint. He gave a clue. Somebody said, Hallelujah. He gave a hint. He gave a clue that I am. They understood that he was not talking about an I am in the terms of the natural. When they knew the hint and the clue, they pick up stone for him. Amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Ramez is hints and clues in the Bible. Jesus constantly gave hints and clues, but he never came out outright and say it. But you got to put it together. Amen. How many are enjoying the word of God here? Say amen. There's another, there's another scripture. There's another F, um, explanation from Romans. There's another one, and I'm thanking God for the Holy Spirit to give him the word. It's called Jarush, D-R-A-S-H, Jarush, which means that when you get the hint and you get the clue, you put it together in scripture and you unlock a mystery. Amen. Can somebody say hallelujah? See, when Isaiah was saying that a virgin will conceive and bear a son, that was just hints and clues, but he had no understanding until we come to New Testament and we understand it through the eyes of what happened with Mary. Somebody say amen. amen. Hints and clues. Somebody say hints and clues. Hints and clues. Say, Lord, give me a hint, give me a clue so that I can do. So you end your misery when you can get, hey, you know what? I just know that God's going to get me out of this. Amen. But if you ask most people, they have no clue what's going on. They throw their hands up in the air. I don't know what's going on in my life. I remember a woman doing this, and I keep saying things about the Holy Spirit. I, she used to testify on Sundays, and then she stopped testifying. So I said, Sister, what happened? Why are you not testifying? She says, Every time I testify on Sunday, Monday morning, all hell break loose. The devil come after me. That problem come after me. So I say, you're gonna, she said, I ain't going to defer that. Me, I'm, I'm not going to defer that devil anymore. She had no hint and no clue of who she was. So she lived miserable. How many know that when you testify, you injure the enemy every time? Come on. We overcome, hallelujah. Jesus says in Matthew 24 and verse 30, and I'm going quickly. He says, you know what? He says, when, he never called himself the son of God. He says, but when the son of man... Amen. Shall come with his angels. If you know that, he was directly quoting the book of Daniel. And he is now bringing Daniel to life because the Bible says in the book of Daniel that the Son of Man will come with his angels. Amen. I know my time is going, but anybody enjoying the word of God? Drash. Take the clue. Unlock the mystery. Are you getting me? Amen. But there's another word, the highest level. It's found in the, the, in the Jewish a word, and it's called sod, S-O-D. Sod means that you can learn it, and you can unlock it with your own ability. It has to be God in it. Unless God reveal it, you can never get it. I'm not hearing somebody. Amen. It is a revelation. It is a transformation of understanding. Listen, I can't get this going to a theological school. I can't get this in, unless Jesus said it like this. He was so, when, he, when Peter came to him and Peter said, Jesus, who do men say that I am? Who do they say that I am? They were all saying all what the other people were saying. They were picking up hints and clues. But Peter said something. He says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says in sod, he says, here he says, he says, flesh and blood 
has not revealed. Come on, somebody, amen. amen. That's the highest level of understanding today. And that's why Jesus rejoices. And somebody lift your hand and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Flesh and blood has not revealed. Amen. If you're living with flesh and blood, you will be living with your natural senses. You will be depending on how you're feeling and how somebody feel about you and how the situation is. But when you're living in the spirit realm, hallelujah, you have a revelation in your tribulation. I have a revelation in your situation, hallelujah, that you know that it will be well, amen. When somebody says, I just know it will work out for me. I just know I'm on the winning side. I just know uh, that God has my back. I just know that no matter how low I go, uh, he'll lift me up. I just know uh, that there is nothing uh, impossible uh, with God. Hallelujah. I just have a revelation uh, that doctors say something, uh, but God, you say something else. Come on, give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. I just know that I will live and not die. I will be the head and not the tail. I just know I am born for such a time like this. My mother didn't tell me that. My father didn't tell me that. My genealogy didn't tell me that. But the Lord of hosts told me that. Amen. God sad in your spirit. You can learn that. You can get that. Hallelujah. From going to school. You got to get born again. Amen. You got to get into the things of God. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Am I being blessed here this morning? You're blessing me. Amen. So, it's a deep message. Are you ready? Are you ready to go a little deeper? There are, there are, there are a couple of things that uh, we use on the earth. You know, there's a car. A car carries you in a distance like a vertical plane. Are you hearing me? So you can use a car to go as far, car, train, bus, whatever, straight line. All right? There's another thing that takes you off from transportation. It's called a what? A plane. Somebody say amen. A plane takes up on a, on, in the air like this. Are you hearing me say hallelujah? Amen? Some of you want to stay on this plane? Go ahead. Some of you take a plane ride? Go ahead. But there's another form of transportation, and that's called a rocket ship. But a rocket ship cannot be like this. It cannot be planted. It has to be straight. Yes. If your spirit is straight today, you'll lift higher today. Because there's rocket fuel here today, amen. Yes. Somebody say hallelujah today. Yes. The mysteries, can you read? Um, that's what Paul claimed. Paul claimed in Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. It was not a flesh and blood story he was telling. It was Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. He was not talking a flesh and blood story. Hear what Paul says he got his revelation from. Are you there with me? Are we preaching? Go ahead. Galatians chapter 1, 11 and 12. But I certify you, brethren. I certify. That the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Come on. For I neither received it of man, Come on. neither was I taught, taught it, it, but by, by the, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hand and say, praise the Lord. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep putting scripture before you until you believe it. Amen. Paul says, it's not a flesh and blood thing. It's not taught to me. It was given. Somebody say, amen. amen. What should they say? To them. Is not. To me, it is. I'm not going to here live in misery. I'm here to live in the mystery of God. Yes. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. But I'm just going to read. I just love the word. Hey, hey, hey. When you go to the buffet and you taste something nice, you go, just take one piece or two, three pieces. Because if you come back to that prime that is tasting nice, you might just be, the, the tree might just be empty. So uh, that's why I said 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. <laughs> So because seven, eight, nine, amen. All right, let's go. <laughs> amen. Go ahead. Which in other ages was not made unto verse three, the sons of men. From verse 3. From verse 3. From verse 3. Chapter 3. Uh, How yeah. that by revelation he made unto, made known unto the mystery. Underline the word mystery. As I wrote a four in a few words. This is not for those of you just come fast. Say me a little prayer. Lay me down and say this is for you to grow. Amen. Amen. Mature word for mature people. Amen. Underline the word mystery. Say mystery. mystery. Say it again. Mystery. 
He said, for that by revelation he had made known unto me, made known unto me the mystery that as I wrote a four in few words. Verse 4, read this. I'm trying to help you. Whereby when you read, ye you may, may understand, understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So you'll say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. We go, go, keep on going. Keep on going. This is awesome. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, so as know. it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Six again, seven, six, seven, eight, nine. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of it's his power. Him. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, uh -huh. that I should preach among the Gentiles Amen. the unsearchable riches of Christ. Come on, verse 9. Come on. Verse 9. Where's the mystery? And to make all men see what, what is the fellowship of the mystery. Stop there. Say which... you've got to see it. Stop there. Say you've got to see it. The Spirit of God have to let you see it. Because I've seen people see something and not see something. Amen. Hear what the Word of says. And it says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the which from the beginning of the world have been hid in who created all things by to some Jesus is still a prophet. To some, Jesus still just a healer. But to us, he's creator of all things. Maker of all things. In him, we have all we need. Come on, hallelujah. Okay, so we get a little understanding that don't tell me Paul got this from Judaism and because he was learned under the feet of Gamaliel. In order for you to learn from God, you have to unlearn for what you learn from men. You have to, he has to do two things. He has to offload all your garbage in your head. Freak setting. Are you hearing me? Amen. That's the Adam setting. Freak setting. When you get a problem, you freak out. It's a, a set, it's a crazy setting we have in our mind. The natural man have a crazy setting. He inherited from Adam. When things go wrong, he wants to wail and cry and he wants to go down in tears. But when you are reset by God, in everything you give thanks. Hallelujah. In everything you rejoice. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Can you lift your hand and say, thank God. thank God. I am recalibrated. I am reset. I am giving a chance. Hallelujah. To hear new things in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me just tell you quickly, the word mystery is different from Webster Dictionary because when you look at the word mystery, you hear these wonderful movies, mystery, this and whatever. This is nothing to do with mystery of the word of God. When the word mystery, I wrote it down so I can be a blessing to you. A mystery in the Bible is something that cannot be known. It is hid by God. But when God chose to reveal it, he chose to reveal it in a manner that he wants to do it, in a time he wants to do it, and to our people, he wants to do it. Amen. Come on, say hallelujah. He reveals it. If he wants to reveal it to babes and suckling, he'll do it. Amen. Remember when Eli was blind and he couldn't see very far in his old age and he was saying in the church and he was there doing this. And the Bible says a little boy by the name of Samuel and he was a little boy, didn't know much, but he was sleeping at the, at the, at the at front of the Ark of the Covenant. Do you remember that? Amen. The Bible says that he was there in his innocence and God said, I'm going to do something, but I can't tell anybody. So what did he do? He says, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel thought it was Eli. So he got up and he ran to the master and said, Eli, did you call me, sir? He says, no, go back and sleep to boarding me. I'm in meditation right now. Amen. He goes again. He does the sex and second time. Amen. You all know, everybody know that story? Then Eli perceived that it was God wanted to say something. Somebody said, hallelujah. What did Eli say? Eli had the method. 
but he didn't have the right motive. Sometimes we have the right method. Today the church is teaching methods. And you could understand the grammatical way and the analytical way and the intellectual way. But God will bypass all those ways for his way. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah today. Lift your hand and say praise the Lord. Listen to what he says. Samuel, Samuel said this. He said, he said, listen, when the hear that voice says, what did he say? Speak. Speak. For thy. Amen. And God says, Samuel, he's only six or seven years old. Samuel, I'm going to do a thing in Israel. I'm going to bother everybody. And he gave him all the mysteries and all the whatever of how he's going to take the covenant and everything. And as it was revealed. Why? Because God always wants to reveal. Amen. Amen. The word revel, mystery in your Bible, read it carefully. Every time you see the word mystery, because Paul uses 21 times the word mystery. And every time you see the word mystery, it is connected to the word of make known. Somebody say Amen. Make known, manifest, preach, understand. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, church. Are you hearing this? Let me go again. Anytime you read the word mystery, it's not to be hidden or to be hide. It means to be proclaimed and let everyone know that that which was hidden is, al- is now here. Amen. Yeah. It, is to be, it is to be made known, manifest. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't know if you're getting anything, but I hope I'm just not talking to the ear. Yeah. Yeah. So the Lord talked to me. Somebody say Hallelujah. Lift your hand and says, when God showed me something, he wanted the whole world to know it. Amen. When God may do it in secret, but he wants you to testify in public. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Lift your hand and say, he may heal you in secret. He may deliver you in secret, but he wants the whole world to know uh, that he is God. Amen. That's why we use our testimony. Somebody say, amen. amen. So, so, Paul is giving us nine mysteries that the church needs to know to end your misery. Somebody say, Amen. The mystery how time does run away on Sunday. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, so the power of your revelation, the power of the revelation you have from God will change you forever. Somebody say Amen. Amen. So mysteries are not secrets, but I want to show you something that is very powerful, that it hit my spirit so much that the brethren who was with me and I shared it with them because do you want to be a servant of God? Are you servants of God here? Lift your hand if you're servants of God. I love you. Don't feel. Are you a servant? Are you serving God? Why are you so afraid? Are you serving God? Are you a servant of God? Are you serving Him in spirit and in truth? Are you serving Him? Hallelujah. Well, let's look at what Jesus did in John chapter 15, verse 13, 14, and 15. Amen. Are you there with me? John chapter 15, Sister Barbara is laughing. <laughs> Amen. What does he say? No, we're going to go. No, let's not go that one. John chapter 15. Are we there, brethren? Pastor Mick? I need you here, right? Verse 7. Um, what did I say? Just let's read with me verse 14. Um, verse 13. Greater love. Read with me, greater love had what? That a man laid on his life for his servant. Did he lay down his life for his servant? Read the Bible. Stop taking things that you hear people say, read the word of God. Did he lay down his life for his servant? Answer me. What did he say? Let's read again. He said what the word says. Greater love. Had no man then that a man lay down his life for his, for his what? Let me read a little lower. Let me go a little further. Jesus says, because you are my, my God. You are my friend and you, you are my friend because you're doing whatever I tell you to do. Are you hearing me? Amen. See, we kind of, see, there where I get a problem, where I get the licks now, because I want to be a servant of God, and you tell me I'm a friend of God. Because you don't understand the depth of the revelation. So you want to remain with uh, Pishat. Amen? But I want to give you salt today. I want to change you so that you will never be the same again. Let me show you something. 
What did Jesus say? You get a little deep. I didn't just left it there. He says, now, a servant, read with me verse 15. He said, hence what I call you, no more servant. It's good to be a servant, but you can't stay there. That's a level that you can't remain now. You've got to grow. You've got to move. Somebody say, hallelujah. Tell somebody, leave the playpen behind. Leave the, uh, the, the pacifier. The pediatric, the the theatric, the antic. Get rid of those antics. Don't let them preach me out. I'm preaching you in. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. He says a servant don't know what the master is doing. He just obeying. Bring the plate. Move the broom. Move this. That's why some people are miserable. Because they don't know why they do what they do. But if you understand why you do what you do, because you're graduating yourself out of the friend, out of, the, out of that. Hear what Jesus says. He says, now, henceforth, I call you not servant. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I've called you what? For all things that I have heard of my father, I have. Let the people lift their hand and say hallelujah. You want scriptures? You want scriptures? Bible says that there was a great judgment about to fall. The judgment was so intense that God says, I'm going to go down among them and I'm going to do this judgment over Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible says that while he was going into Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible says, he says, shall I hide this uh, not from my servant, but from my friend Abraham? Come on, somebody help me with the word of God. Should I hide this from my friend Abraham? Should I not tell him what I'm about to do in Sodom and Gomorrah? Amen. God, let me tell you something. If you want to remain a servant, go ahead. But I am a friend of God. And he knows my name. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. True. You know why? Let me tell you why. Let me give you a little deeper stuff. You can't be God's friend and a friend of this world. You can't be God's friend and a friend of the devil. When you are a friend of God, you lose all the friendships of the enemy. Hallelujah. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Why do you think people don't want to do it? Because they want to keep a little connection going. We want a little connection going. You are enmity with God when you are a friend of this world. If you want to be a friend of God, listen, if God is on your side, who will be against you? Lift your hand and say hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and say, there is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Tell your neighbor what a friend I have in Jesus. Oh, I wish I could preach to somebody. What a friend I have in Jesus. All of my grief and tears to care. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. That's what I have. I don't have a servant master relation. I have a friend in Jesus. You get that in your spirit, amen. Stop, stop and think about it. When you become a friend of Jesus, everybody don't want to have nothing to do with you. When you was a friend of the world, as you walk in, they buy a wrong for you. They buy a smoke for you. They keep you in bondage. But when you came to Jesus, you have to lose all that. But I got a friend in Jesus. Somebody help me lift your hands and say, what a friend. All my grief and care to care, everything. I Rose, oh, come on, church, lift your hand and say hallelujah. <laughs> come on, hallelujah. I am a friend of God. I'm not afraid to walk alone. The people tell me one time, I was going through some real difficult time, and somebody said, Pastor, like you're losing it now. Because I'm talking away. And I'm talking away, talking and talking. And they say, what you doing? I say, I'm talking to my friend. And you see him, where he is. Who are you talking to? I'm being, am I being real to you? Tell somebody, to them is a mystery. But he walks with me. And he talks with me. He's with me, hallelujah. In my high, in my low. In my going out, in my coming in. I can feel him, I can know him. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You can't see him, but he's here, hallelujah. Come on, church, you're hearing the word. God is not a mystery to a believer. He's a mystery to the unbeliever. 
but we have solved the mystery. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Come on, somebody say hallelujah to them. Woo! Glory to the pastor. Tell me, I was telling him I'm going to be very calm and preach very calm. He said, wait on you go there. <laughs> Can't believe it. Are you hearing the word of God? Somebody say, I'm a friend. Say, because, hey, keep your friendship going. Sometimes you don't even tell your own family something, but your friend knows something. Say, but I'm my friend here, my back. I mean, you know that God wants a friendship with you, amen. No, I, and it's a bad thing to only have a friend in need. Because some of you only run into God when you have a need. That kind of friend I don't want to have. I want a friend who is in deed, amen. Somebody give God a praise, hallelujah. When you talk to church people, oh, Father, I have a need, I have a need. Why can't you just come there and say, Father, I just want to talk to you. I just want to be with you. I just want to love you upon you. Come and give it praise and glory. Why just you just stop being a needy people, a greedy people, and just be a people who just love the Lord. Amen. Greater love had no man than this, than he laid down his life for his friend. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Jesus. Are you catching this here this morning? Amen. The Bible says that, I'm going to jump a little bit because I want to tell you the mystery. Somebody say mystery again. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. He says, I wish above all things that all men, I'm going to just go quickly because time is going. I don't just want you to get to this point. I want you to go beyond. Are you there with me? 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 says what? That who will have all men be saved. Some say hallelujah. But he didn't stop there. That's the mistake we make. We want to be saved and play safe. If you keep living in your nice little box, call your comfort zone, or you build a bigger one called a cage. If you keep living in your comfort zone, I'm preaching, I know some of you wouldn't like me, but I am here to trouble the world. They, they scientifically said something, and I shared it with the group. They said if you're having problem with your memory, it's because your brain has been trained to think in one way, and because it begins to train one way, you're unable to activate the other cell. So if you're brushing your teeth with your right hand every morning, try brushing with your left hand. You may not have a clean mouth set of teeth, but you might have good memory. <laughs> it activates a side of you. So stop using one hand to do something. Use the next hand. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Okay, if you're right-handed, touch somebody with your left hand. Amen. Anyway, he says that I will like that all men be saved. And, say it with me, say, and, and to come to the knowledge of, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. This is not baby thing, this is real stuff. The word save in scripture comes from the Hebrew word that is very important. It says the word save comes from the Hebrew called sozo. And sozo means to be healed, to be delivered, to be saved. Are you hearing me, Hallelujah. It goes deeper. So sometimes we think like this. In John 3.16, can we all say John 3.16 if you know it? Now there's a sermon in a sermon here. Is that okay with you? A mystery within a mystery. I was supposed to pray, but there's a mystery. We think that it's all about us. Jesus came, died on the cross, and for us to go to heaven, and that's where we are. It's more. Are you there with me? Yes. Somebody say, it's more. it's more. Let me bring a deeper revelation for you here this morning. Because the problem with the church is that they have made it so about humanity that they have forgotten eternity. Oh. Are you hearing me? Amen. Yes. Listen to this. Jesus did not come to just die on a cross. I'm going to give you a word here. He came, I'll give you scriptures, he came to fix a timeline. 
that was breached by sin and wickedness that has cut man off from the eternal one. Are you hearing me here now? So that God couldn't stand sin in his presence. So man was alienated, enmity, cut off from God. Are you there with me? And Jesus had to come. Are you there with me? To fix the timeline. To bring man from humanity back into eternity. By the unity of the spirit. Amen. Let me preach that to you. Are you, you know what I'm saying. Amen. How many of you know that you already catch that already? Lift your hand if you just catch it. If you didn't do it. I lose that using left hand now. We go in. In Isaiah 54, he says, He will be known as the repairer of the breach. He will repair the wasteland. He will bring back all that was disconnected. And he's going to bring it back to not, not to his word, but to his cross. Amen. Because his body will reconcile us back to God. Amen. Let's take it here. Let me take it a little deeper. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So read it again. Say, for God so loved the world that he brought, what he brought? Eternity to Jesus. For man shall not perish but have what? He brought back what? Eternity. Are you there with me? Let me bring it other. He that have the son, he that have not the son, he that believe it on the Son have what? Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. This thing is more than just praying and crying. He fixed the timeline that you can live with him. Hallelujah. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. No man can take you to heaven. No man could do it. No angel could do it. It had to be God. And that's called the mystery of godliness. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Are you hearing me? <laughs> read, read, read. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Are we being blessed? Yes. Hear what he says. Hear what he says. Hallelujah. For First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Three. Three, 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 three. Read it for me, everybody. And without. Who? Underline the word. Not angel, not Michael, not, uh, not the brother of G, uh, whatever nonsense. God! Somebody say God! Was what? In the what? In the what? Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. In your misery. Solve the mystery. When you have a deeper revelation of Jesus, you end your situation. He's more than the healer of your bones and body. He's more than the one who take away your sin. He's the one that joins you back to your DNA, to your true self, to who you are in God. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Say hallelujah. Read it again, brother. I want the church to read it. Are you hearing that? Read it from Read it loud. Say, there's no controversy. Great. It's a mystery. Who's that? Who's that? Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Preach unto the gentle. Believe on and over. There's only one person that fits that bill. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a mystery it is. <laughs> Amen. That's when you get excited. Mm -hmm. I know that. Hey, let me tell you something. Eh? When I'm hungry and I eat, I can make you get hungry. You know? If the food is good, and the way I eat the food, you get hungry. Eh? And who knows that to be truth? Let me hand you. You, you, you hungry? You're sorry. You eat that food, you make our next man feel hungry. Say, boy, let me taste what you're hungry. You should be so hungry for God that your neighbor should want to get a taste of Jesus. That people want to get a taste of him. Come on, somebody say, hallelujah. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hallelujah. 
Stop nibbling at the table. Start eating. <laughs> Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know. Are you getting blessed here today? Amen. Woo. And let me tell you something. You can watch your weight physically, but I want to be a heavyweight spiritually. And the devil see me, he must say, when I put a hand on him, he must know. It's a heavy hand he gets in. Amen. No, no, the Bible says, lay hand on them that are sick. Amen. Hallelujah. There was a fellow by the name of Spit Wigglesworth. I know my guy became laugh. Spit Wigglesworth had a gift in, and he used to do something. He, he used to say, he prayed for everybody in his line, and nobody ever uh, gets sick or whatever. They say, why? What was that? Because when he see the people that come in, he used to take his hand and hit them one cough. <laughs> Punch them. Stop them. Whatever. Are you hearing me? And the people will fall in the ground. And they came and said, why are you abusing me? He said, no, I never hit anybody. I hit the devil. <laughs> Woo. Don't go and hit nobody. I get charged. And may I tell you to do that? <laughs> that will be your mystery, not mine. <laughs> Amen. Church, are you being blessed to hear the word of God? The mystery. The power, there's more to go. I'm just on the surface. I'm not even divers yet. Are you there, amen? Somebody say hallelujah, come on. I'm going to get quickly and then see what happens. What time it is. Oh my God. Salvation means sozo. Say sozo. sozo. So we say for God came. So he says here, for verse 16, everybody know verse 16. But verse 17 says, for God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Somebody say hallelujah. I know you know it, so that's why I say it. Amen. So he said the word, that word here is found sozo. It means, let's do, let's do the adjectives that describe in Greek. It says, sozo means to be saved, healed, delivered, protected. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. And restored back to original condition. Like a picture. You have a picture that has been old, and you touch it up, and it says, can you save this picture for me? Are you anybody hearing me? And the person will do something and put the illumination, whatever. And you say, oh, this picture was saved. This artwork was saved. It was brought back to original condition. Let me read that now. For God, I want to stop to you there. For God sent his son, nothing to the world, to condemn the world. But the world through him should be healed, delivered, protected, and brought back to original condition. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. That's what he did. Return back to the original state. Are you blessed? Yes. I'm not no reconditioned, repatched man. I'm a new creation. Amen. Amen. Stop living in the fact that, oh my God, God is my sister Barbara, are you good? <laughs> I love you guys. If you love somebody, you should tell them the truth. Amen. Stop living miserable lives. Don't ever let the devil make you lie so much in your head. There's something called the mystery of the faith. Could we all say amen? I go quickly here. Amen. See, these guys are ready to roll. Amen. Are we good? Amen. So, the mystery of the faith. Could we read 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 9, quickly? 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 9. Holding... Somebody say, hold it. When you get that mystery, you have to hold on to it. Because everything in the world wants to take away what you know. Come on, you all not talking the truth. They'll try to analyze it. Criticize it. Laugh at it. Mock it. Tell you that you believe it in a bucket. But you got to tell them, listen, hey, 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 hey. They dump on you, Amen. But you keep on holding the mystery of your faith up high. Amen. Say like Paul, say like Job. Job said him. Job had misery. He had so much of misery, death and problem and wife giving him everything could go wrong and going wrong. But the day he solved the mystery, he end his misery. He's there and he's on a dump and he's pulling his body and then he says, hmm. He said, I know something. I know something. And he keeps and he says, 
For I know my Redeemer lives. And though these worms could feed on this flesh, I will see him, hallelujah. He solved the mystery and he ended his misery. So he said, though God will slay me, yet I will trust him. Give me praise and glory, hallelujah. Church, are you getting this, amen? said, I solved the mystery. You could go ahead and do what you want, devil. I'm still a winner at the end of the day. I write books. And I'm no shame about that because sometimes I write crap sometimes before, you know. So I usually go and read books, right? And hear what I do. I read the back of the book before I read the front of the book. I like to see how it ends. So I don't want to read something that have leave with me a sad feeling. I ain't going to read something that's going to leave me feel depressed. So I read the end, and if it's a good ending, I'll start at the beginning. And I read the end of this book. It says, no more tears. No more sorrow. No more pain. No more trouble. The former things have passed away. Amen. Somebody lift your hand and say, hallelujah. Read the end of the book. The devil lost. And you and I win with Jesus. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Guys, can you give me five minutes again? Can I get five minutes again? Now, quick, quickly about it. We can have a good time. We have the mystery. Go quickly. We have the mystery of godliness, the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of the rapture, the mystery of your faith, the mystery of Christ in you, the mystery of the church. God compared the church as a bride. Are you hearing me? Amen. You got to understand all of these things, and that's why we encourage you to do not just come to church and say, it's a mystery with a man preaching. <laughs> How many of you, I asked the person one time, we had a class, and I said, okay, what is, what is an apostle? They say, apostle is a man called. I said, what is an epistle? One person is a female <laughs> apostle. <laughs> apostle is a man, and the epistle is a female. Read the book, amen. <laughs> you understand what's going on? Miss it, come to a preacher. Miss everything, amen. But, but the point is, I want to, want to get you in your spirit, is very important that the mysteries of the Old Testament was written, but the Spirit of God has brought it alive, amen. amen. Could you all say hallelujah? hallelujah? Do not live on yesterday manner. Amen. I used to say things like this. When you pray for people, you pray for somebody, ask them, the pain gone? That's wrong. There's no way in the Bible say, ask them if the pain gone. <laughs> Do you ever read Jesus pray for him and say, the pain gone? <laughs> but here you testify. This time it says, I was healed because the pain was gone. <laughs> Don't fix that. I was healed because the word says I'm healed. Amen. I am delivered because the word says I'm delivered. Amen. Can you lift your hand and say, if the word says it, I don't care how I feel about it. If the word says I'm healed, I'm healed. If the word says I'm saved, I'm saved. If the word says I can do it, I can do all things, amen. Stop sticking how you're feeling to what God is doing. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Amen. Because some of you are only going as well as how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. And when you lose feeling in church, you say, I didn't feel nothing. And I tell you, this is serious. A woman... Oh my God, so much thing. I'm preaching. And she said, Pastor, I can feel the Holy Spirit. I said, How? She said, The hair in my hand raised, my neck raised, everything. She said, Look, 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 the Holy Spirit will win. When? All she hear is, I said, You're feeling cold. Because you can't feel the Holy Spirit by the hair movement. You feel the Holy by the Word of God in your heart. Amen. Come on, so I said, Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We don't live with goosebumps. Tell somebody, I don't live with goosebumps. I live with the knowledge of God. Amen. In Psalms 149, and I'll finish here. Psalms 149. Read that for me. Verse 2 and 3. Psalms 149. I'm holding it. Okay. (laughs) Psalms 149. 
Are you there with me? Guys? Okay. Amen, amen. Come on. Those seconds are important to me. <laughs> Let me read it. Let me go back. Come on. Read it. You have it? I'm going to read it for you. Psalm 149, verse 5 and 6. All right, everybody have it? If you have it, help me read it. Wherefore, should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity of my deeds... Hold on, 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 hold on. I don't think that's the scripture we have to read. Psalms 149 says, verse 5, Let the saints be joyful in glory, and let them sing aloud upon their bed. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand. Could you all say hallelujah? Now, the mystery is, we all know about high praises. If you want to say amen. You can't have a low spirit and have high praises on your mouth. If you come to church with a low spirit, you have a low praise. When I come to the house of God and I see you, I'm happy to see you, but I'm also happy to know that I didn't come looking for God. I came with him. I walked with him. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Those of you who don't know him, he wants to be your friend. He wants to you. But those who know him, say he came with me. Somebody say, he drove with me and he, he took me out. Amen. Now, high praise is not a problem. But here's a shift of mystery. He says now that high praises is in their mouth and the sword is in their hand. With that imagery, that's what the Old Testament man sees. He sees himself fighting with an outside connection. Read with me Revelation chapter 1. Look how the mystery is solved in Jesus' word. Are you there with me? Revelation chapter 1. Amen. You get? After that pass, I hope that the people come to church next week with great mysteries. Amen. Revelation chapter 1 verse 15 and 16 says this. Are you there with me? Read with me. He says. And his feet like unto the Okay, let's read this again for those of you hearing. He says, And he had in his right hand not a sword, but he had the seven stars, and out of his where has the sword gone? In his mouth a two-edged sword. Can I just preach for you a one-minute sermon? You got to understand. Stop fighting things outside and put the word of God. The word of God is known as a two-edged sword. When the two-edged sword, the word of God, I can go deep into it, is in your mouth, then you can do real damage to the enemy. Jesus told us how to defeat the enemy by saying, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds of the heart. He used the word. Come on, say hallelujah. hallelujah. The problem with the church today is that they have the sword in the side of them. The Bible is on the bed stand. The Bible is in the cupboard. The Bible is when they come to church. It's part of the uniform. You all wear uniform. You know what I'm talking about. I can't go to church with my Bible. Where my Bible? Whole week. Where my Bible is? Hmm. Amen. Anybody not preaching to you? Amen? Amen. Who take my Bible? If you was using it, you wouldn't be losing it. Right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you there with me? The sword must now leave your hand and go in your mouth. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to cut the devil down with the word of God in my mouth. Your confession must be sharp. Somebody say hallelujah. When the word of God is on your tongue of a believer, hallelujah. He is no longer allowing the devil to talk to him. He's talking to sickness, talking to the, the devil. Amen. So I'm going to encourage you today. I have many more things to say, but did you enjoy the mystery? Amen. Hallelujah. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hand and say hallelujah. Woo, Sister Barbara, can you bring that teaching of the word again with I pray over the church and lift it over the people of God. To somebody who says, I'm sharpening my sword today. I'm going to have it in my mouth. I'm going to, I'm going to speak life. I'm going to cut things out. I'm going to cut things out. Amen. Hallelujah.
Let me tell you what people said. I prayed for a lady and she said, my poor knees. I said, your knees are rich now. Oh, yeah. Pastor, I'm a poor back. No poor back here. My poor back is going to get rich today. Glory, Lift your hand and says, I am a treasure in earthly vessel. I, the Bible says, you are a treasure in an earthen vessel. Meaning that God has placed something in you that is so powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. So you finish here. Touching heaven and says, end your misery. End your misery. End your misery. Solve the mystery. Solve the mystery. Amen. Amen. Sister, going to lift up. I want you to repeat it. You just read for them. They will enjoy it. Over the church and over us in the year, in the year 2024, on this day, you heard something that draw you closer to God. Say, I am a friend of God. I am a friend Lift of your God. hand and say, because of that friendship with him, I have the ability to function on this planet. Give him praise. Go ahead, sister. I am perfect with the life and nature of God. I am full of life in Jesus because he is the answer to all things. I am strong in Christ, and with my good health and strength, I am content to serve the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live and not die, and I will declare the works of the Lord. Jesus says to me in John 6, 20, it is I, do not be afraid. It is I, the Almighty God. It is I, the Sovereign King. It is I, the Great Shepherd, your shield, your protector. It is I, the rock, your fortress. It is I, your deliverer. It is I, your healer, your comforter. It is I, the great I am. My heart is in alignment with God. My heart is in alignment with God. I'm on the same page with God. And I have the ability to see the outcome before the onset. Amen. Father, this morning I thank you for the joy of the revelation of the Word of God. Can you point your hands towards me and just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hand and say, Father, just thank you. And I point my hands towards you and we pray that this church will grow. It will not be moved by the emotional state, but it will grow in the Word. It will grow in the knowledge of the Word. And they will grow in truth and they will grow in the grace of God and the power of God will emanate in your life. That you will not be living miserable life, but you will live a joyful life. Don't worry about the situation. God give you joy in your salvation. Hallelujah. So Father, we lift up this church. We lift up the congregants. We lift up those that are here and not here. And we pray not only this, but we pray for the mystery of the body of Christ. Where the two or three are gathered on the earth. Hallelujah. Father, this morning we are grateful. And thank you.